To disassemble a Minotaur 5 pager, the first thing you'll need to do is remove the four screws that are in the back of the pager. Once the four screws have been removed, you can remove the back housing. The easiest way to remove the back housing is to crack one side open. You could use some type of a blunt instrument such as a um, screwdriver or something that's not going to mar the surface too badly. You just want to gently pry this open. You don't need to jam it in there very far. Um, you're just trying to crack this seal. Once this seal has been cracked open, you'll be able to remove the back housing. This is the Minuter 5 with the back housing removed. You'll notice there's a couple rubber spacers in here. You'll want to just leave these in place if you're just going to change the back housing and put a new housing on. This center one is not going to fall out, but this one may fall out or it may be stuck to the old back housing. So you'll want to remove it and place it back into the pager. It only goes one way. It's fairly easy to figure out which way it goes, but you'll want to put that back in the pager if you're just going to change the back housing. If you're going to continue to disassemble the pager, then you're going to want to remove this rubber piece or like I said it probably fell out already. Now that you remove the back housing you can remove the front housing. It comes off in a similar manner to the back housing. There is a uh, seal around the edge. Sometimes this seal kind of sticks to the front housing. You need to be careful when you remove it uh, that you don't accidentally remove the seal with the front housing. The seal itself is attached to the center housing. The seal is a fairly soft rubber gasket and when you get in here you could probably just use your fingernails. If this is really tough to get off you could get a, a large screwdriver and just gently pry this up. You just want to get it far enough where you can get your finger in, underneath of here and pull the rest of the way out. Once you've removed the front and back housing the pager should look like this. It'll be in three sections. You'll have a front housing with a rubber spacer, a center housing which has all the circuit boards attached, and the back housing. To remove the circuit boards from the center housing, the first thing you're going to need to do is remove the receiver board. The receiver board is this small board here. There are two connectors on the receiver board that connects the receiver board to the decoder board. The two connectors you can see here and here. These two connectors connect the receiver board to the decoder board. The, the easiest way to remove the receiver board is simply grabbing it with your hands and rocking, rocking the receiver board back and forth. Be careful not to apply too much pressure or use any type of tools. Um, you want to just use your hands and gently rock the receiver board back and forth until it comes out of these connectors. There is a rubber spacer shown here. It's the black piece. This oftentimes will stick to the receiver when you take it out. If it hasn't came out with the receiver, you can just pull it out with your fingers. It's not held in by anything. Once you have the receiver removed, you can flip the pager over to the other side. On this side you'll see two circuit boards. There is a switch board here and a decoder board here. The switch board has connectors which go into these knobs. You'll need to be careful when you're when you're removing the switch board not to damage the knobs that are attached to the switch board. So to do this, you need to disassemble the decoder and switchboard in the proper order. To remove the circuit boards from the center housing, you first need to unplug the earphone jack. You may not be aware of this, but there is an earphone jack on the bottom of the pager. It's oftentimes covered up with a black piece of tape. You'll need to remove that piece of tape and then unplug that earphone jack. The second step you'll need to do is break the seal here on the programming or charging contacts. There is a thin seal of adhesive here. It's clear. It's very, it's uh, very small. It's kind of hard to see, 
but this will not come out of the housing unless you break that seal. So what you're going to want to do is just run, it, run, a, run a small tool across here, such as a small screwdriver or maybe a, a um, toothpick, and break this seal. And you're not trying to dig down deep into this, you're just trying to remove the little bit of adhesive that's across this piece. Once you've removed the adhesive that was across the charging contacts, you can push the contacts out. Um, it's easiest to do on the other side of the, the board and just push this up. up. You'll want to be careful not to touch or to uh, damage this ribbon cable. It is easy to damage or to break these ribbon connectors. So you'll need to be very careful when you do this. Once you have removed the programming or charging connector from the housing, the next thing you'll need to do is get the earphone jack out of the hole that's in the center housing. This is probably going to be the most difficult part and also the part that you're most likely to damage the pager. So you're going to need to be very careful when you do this. The procedure is to simply pull on this plastic center housing. It'll deform the plastic out a little bit. As the plastic's deformed, you can then pull this straight out. So you're basically going to leave the knobs in place and then you're going to rock the whole receiver board up from the back or the bottom of the pager. If you have pulled this out far enough, this should easily come straight out of the housing with a gentle pull. If you're pulling diff if you're having difficulty in pulling too hard on this, you likely have this snagged on the housing and you need to be careful because you're probably going to damage something. Once you've freed the audio jack from the housing, the whole assembly of both circuit boards slides straight out of the center housing. Be careful not to move these knobs because these knobs have slots in them that line up with these couplers that are on these circuit board knobs. And if you get these misaligned, your on-off volume or your channel selector knob will be reversed or in the wrong spot. To remove the switchboard from the decoder board, you'll need to gently rock the switchboard back and forth. Um, you want to hold this with one hand and the decoder board with another hand. You'll see there are two connectors um, shown here. These connectors are fairly easily broken, so you'll want to be very gentle in rocking the circuit boards back and forth as you're pulling them apart. This rubber piece comes off. It is not attached so it'll likely fall off when you remove the switchboard and you can simply just place it back in place.